Hello again, this is me um, Intel home theatre computer that's got a failing motherboard. And this is one of what my next project's going to be, and I'm going to be changing the motherboard out in this computer. The fault started with the USBs not working. I knew there'd be something wrong there, something major wrong, because normally when the USB stops working, you know, it indicates all the problems with the board. And slowly but surely, it's just started failing all over the place, so uh, I'm going to be putting a new one in. The one that's in at the moment, it's a micro ATX board for socket 775, and the board is a AS Rock G4 MH USB 3. That's the board that's in at the moment, and I'm going to be changing it to an MSI G41M P25, which, uh, looking at reviews on the internet, is supposed to be quite a good board for the money. They both, um, this one and the MSI that I'm going to be putting in here, are both uh, the G41 chipset, which is a mainstream chipset for multimedia. Um, they both got. Um, the 16 lane PCI Express slot so if you want to put a, a you know a top end graphics card in you can um, what I'm using at the moment is a 750 no sorry an 850 watt cooler master power supply it's a modular one this was this is what I took out of my gaming rig that I don't use anymore and I've put it in here I know it might seem a bit overkill 850 watt power supply in a computer small like this but uh, you know, instead of me going out and buy a cheap one, I'd rather just use that. Um, it's only just started going wrong on me, the, the motherboard has, so. And probably what's caused it in the first place is my cheap power supply, what I had in there before. It was only a 400 watt one, but it was a, a cheap branded one. So it's probably giving out about 300 and something watts you know because they never give out the desired wattage they say they do the cheap brands uh, now looking on the back of this motherboard there's quite a lot of connectivity on it for a for a cheap uh, motherboard you know there's your um ps2 connectors for your mouse and keyboard there's a dvi digital connection there's your d sub connection for your monitor there's a HDMI output there for your television or high-end monitor. We've got two USB 2.0 ports. We've got your gigabit LAN. Um, two USB 3.0 ports there. And then you've got your 5.1 analog output stereo um, audio card there. And I'm using a, a Sound Blaster Creative X5, I think it's called. The card that I've got here at the moment. That's I've had to repair that as well in the past. Uh, a couple of caps have gone on there, but it's a damn good card. Um, I think it's an XFi Extreme Music. Um, nice card, yeah. Nice sound cards, decent sound on there. It's high, high definition as well. Um, like I say, putting this high-end power supply in there should be able to upgrade to whatever I want in here now. If I wanted to put a really top-end card in, I could do. You know, because the the case design of this does allow you to put you know quite a bit of graphics card in there, which is very unusual for a home theatre computer case because normally you've got no space in them. But um, you know this is set out very well, the Antec one. I'm just trying to think of the name of the case. It's Antec Remove. Is it Fusion Remote? Yeah, that's it. Fusion Remote in silver. They do it in black as well. But to me, I got the silver one because I you know. My philosophy is if it's metal it should look like metal, <laughs> that's the reason I went for the silver one. It's pointless having nice aluminium and just painting it black, you know, so I went for the silver version. Now, as a lot of people know, the screens in these cases are absolutely terrible. They are the sound graph cases, uh, sound graph screens, and the picture quality on them is absolutely awful. So I've taken it out, and I've put one in from a website called what's that website called uh, lcdmodkit.com if you go onto lcdmodkit.com you can put one in here of your own that works on lcd smarty um, you can disable the screen and just leave the remote sensor working on the screen and put your own screen in front there with a silver front on and the the quality of the picture on it's a lot better 
and it you know it gives you more useful information as well because the one that was in the sound graph one was it, it wasn't very good it was just giving you basic information about what videos are playing and what have you but this one you can program with it whatever you want but the software is very restricted on the sound graph version so i've put that in there i've got a samsung dvd burner in there at the moment um sata which does the job quite well it's nice and quiet that driver is at the front of the case here we've got um, a firewire port and another two usb ports there You've got your microphone and your headphone jack or speakers jack, whatever you want to use it for. The reset button. Your hard drive LED there, which I've changed to blue. That used to be white. And the power button there. And the volume control went in this case. So I, I ordered a replacement from Soundgraph. And this one clicks, as you can hear. And it has a button that you push in. The other one didn't have a button on, it was just a very basic one. So, I replaced the volume control in there. Just had to modify the um, potentiometer a little bit, get it fit, but it, I got it in there and it works okay, brilliant. So, uh, and it does work off remote control as well, so no problems. Even though I've took that screen out, the remote control still does work. Because I've, all I've done is wired up the remote sensor to the board. I've took the LCD the screen itself out of, uh, out of the board and just wired the um, sensor up off it. And like I say, I've just put another screen in there so I can use the remote. So this, we, I've ordered the board, the mini replacement motherboard, which should be here in the next few days from a place on the internet called base.com. And I got it quite cheap. I got it for about 40, 42 pound with free postage. So I'm quite chuffed with that. It's quite good for a DDR3 motherboard that holds 8 gig of RAM. But this one, um, I have had ASRock motherboards before, or ASRock as you know, some people call them, but um, I've never had no problems with them apart from this one. This one's just failed on me, you know, in bits and bobs all over the place. First the USBs, then the memory controller started dying on it. So I can't wait to get that board fit in there and get it all up and working again it's been a cracking machine for me music making and what have you this has if you look at some of my previous videos with the um, infinity album that I'm making those all those songs have been made on this computer with Ableton Live 8.5 8.2.5 and an Innovation Launchpad all those songs have been made on here I've got a solid state drive in here as well underneath very clever what they've done with this case is underneath the case they've put a bracket that you can attach um, a solid state drive in that goes underneath your CD-ROM so that's a that's a fantastic idea and because they cause no vibration you don't need to put them in this in this part anyway in the R drive holder these have got rubber grommets on for stopping vibration now my backup drive on here with all my music stored and what have you is um, a Western Digital Green Power 160 gig a very very quiet drive this is I had a virgin media box that uh, that died on me and they brought a replacement so I took the drive out of there which is a SATA 2 drive and I put it in here and it's a fantastic drive very very quiet you can hardly tell it's on actually so that's done its job well this is a Coulomb Master, the heat sink is 775 Coulomb. I'm going to have to put it in the title description because I find I can't remember the name of it. But it's a Coulomb Master one. And uh, it's got four large copper heat pipes on there at the side. And it does a cracking job. It's a fantastic heat sink. And this was only, I think this was only about £15, something like that. And it's been brilliant. I've had it in two machines now. It's been a fantastic heat sink, and the, the processor that's in, that's in this at the moment is a QX ninety six fifty quad core extreme, which is uh, you know the very expensive chips when they came out a couple of years ago. And uh, I mean, I brought this one two hundred pounds second hand about eighteen months ago, and uh, it's, a, it's a really good performing processor. It's on par with a lot of the um, i-series that Intel have got out now, so uh, 
Yeah, it's a very nice process. It's got, uh, is it six meg of cash? Something like that. I think so, yeah. Um, actually, looking at this board now, there is a couple of capacitors bolts down there. I haven't got my macro switched on at the moment, but there's a couple of bolts there next to the heatsink. It's always the case with capacitors. They're the first thing to go um, and anything that's um, electrical where heat's concerned. They're always the first thing to go. And with this being a cheaper board, there is only a couple of solid state caps in here, which is to be expected. Um, but I'm a bit disappointed because I've only had this, this motherboard about uh, four months. You know, I know it was only cheap, but you'd expect last something last a bit longer than that, really. These fans at the side are the ones that were supplied with the case. These are very good, very, very quiet, these are. These are three-speed Antec Tri-Cool. And um, basically, the, the, the motors in them are that good. You can connect them to 5 volts and have them virtually silent. In fact, from more than three feet away, you can't hear nothing. So... You'd think it was a fanless system if it was on. You know, there's no noise whatsoever. The only noise this thing makes really is the sound from the CD-ROM drive when it's spinning up. Because like I say, you can't hear the hard drive. So, uh, what I'm gonna do, wait for me motherboard turn up and get this thing replaced. Because, 